welcome to this module where we will discuss literature reviews focusing on three different kinds of literature review. We will cover the major features of these reviews and how to choose the right review for your particular research question and context. The learning objectives of this video are What is a literature review? The main features of a narrative review, systematic review and scoping review and being able to outline the differences between these three reviews and how to select the right review for a particular context and research question. A literature review is a piece of work which summarises the literature on a subject, explains it and provides a context. More formally, it is both a summary and explanation of the complete and current state of knowledge on a limited topic as found in academic books and journal articles. The term literature review is a general term which actually encompasses a variety of different kinds of review. In this module we will focus on three reviews the narrative review, the systematic review and the scoping review. A recent webinar lists 50 different kinds of review so this area is certainly exploding but we won't be looking at all of those in this introduction. While narrative, systematic and scoping reviews are all types of literature review, they differ significantly based on the reason for conducting the review, such as the initial research question, the way the supporting literature search and article selection happens, and what measures, if any, are taken to reduce bias. For this reason, it is important to avoid confusing these three types of review. It is also recommended to avoid confusing the generic term literature review with the specific term narrative review. Narrative reviews. Narrative reviews are a very general literature review. They are 1. Mainly descriptive. This means that they are highly unlikely to contain quantitative analysis and will cover their content in a relatively general way. 2 do not involve a systematic search of the literature. Literature searches to support the review will probably not be comprehensive and no effort will be made to reduce bias. 3. They therefore often focus on a subset of studies in an area chosen based on availability or author selection. This can be a major source of bias. 4. Narrative reviews, while informative, tend to include an element of selection bias. They count more as expert opinion rather than rigorous clinical evidence. Systematic reviews. These are very different from narrative reviews. A systematic review is a review of a clearly formulated question that uses systematic and explicit methods to identify, select and critically appraise relevant research and to collect and analyse data from the studies that are included in the review. They are therefore, one, highly focused, with a very clear, well-defined and narrow research question, two, supported by clear methodology, which aims to minimise bias, and three, include a highly rigorous literature search, which makes every effort practically possible to locate all evidence. A well-conducted and well-reported systematic review should be reproducible. This means that its supporting search strategies should be provided, along with information about how the authors decided which articles to include, how relevant data was extracted from those articles, and how the authors drew their final conclusions. For the purposes of reducing bias, at least two people should be involved at all stages in a systematic review. Meta-analyses. A meta-analysis is a particular kind of systematic review which involves statistical analysis. Typically, meta-analyses are conducted for a set of randomised controlled trials. If the RCTs are considered to be similar enough, the results of all the trials can be combined and analysed as if they were one study. This allows for considerable statistical power and, assuming the meta-analysis is well conducted, are a powerful source of clinical evidence. PRISMA Good systematic reviews are usually reported using a standard set of guidelines known as PRISMA, which stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. You may already be familiar with the so-called PRISMA diagram, 
a flowchart demonstrating the various stages which were involved in locating and selecting articles for the systematic review, along with the numbers of articles located at each stage. As narrative reviews do not follow a strict methodology or reporting guidelines, they will not normally contain a PRISMA diagram. Scoping reviews. These are much more exploratory, broad reviews. Scoping reviews aim to map the literature on a particular topic or research area and provide an opportunity to identify key concepts, gaps in the research, and types and sources of evidence to inform practice, policy making, and research. Scoping reviews are particularly suitable for broader research questions, where the researchers wish to rigorously address broader, more complex and exploratory research questions. In this way, they contrast with systematic reviews, which are much more narrow and highly focused. Scoping reviews are usually conducted for one of four reasons. One, to examine the extent, range and nature of research activity. Two, to determine the value of undertaking a systematic review. Three, to summarise and disseminate research findings. And four, to identify research gaps in the existing literature. The methodology for scoping reviews is still in development, but many borrow elements of the systematic review workflow in order to increase their rigour and reproducibility. For example, many scoping reviews will follow elements of the PRISMA reporting guidelines such as a PRISMA diagram. Summary. Let's now summarise the differences between the three types of literature review we have considered today. Research question. The research question is most narrow and focused for systematic reviews and is often narrow for narrative reviews. In scoping reviews, the research question can be either narrow or broad, depending on the context. Risk of bias. Narrative reviews carry the highest risk of bias due to their lack of rigorous methodology. Systematic reviews carry the lowest risk of bias, but a well-conducted scoping review may borrow much of the systematic review methodology and may therefore also be relatively unbiased. Comprehensiveness. Narrative reviews are rarely comprehensive as they do not involve a systematic search of the literature. Systematic reviews are highly comprehensive. In scoping reviews, the authors are likely to have made significant efforts to be comprehensive, but this may be hard to achieve if the research question is broad. Methodology. Narrative reviews are qualitative. Scoping reviews are frequently, but not always, qualitative, while systematic reviews can be either qualitative or quantitative. Standard reporting guidelines. These do not exist for narrative reviews. They do not formally exist for scoping reviews, although elements of systematic review reporting are being adopted. Systematic reviews follow strict reporting guidelines in order to ensure reproducibility. Thanks for watching.